Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over your first preliminary spring forecast for the year of 2021. This is going to be a very exciting forecast and uh, this is going to be the first in about three different spring forecasts that I'm going to do. I'm going to try and do one every month, so this is the one for the month of January. We'll do another one in February and probably another one at the last day of February, uh, just before meteorological spring starts. If anybody is curious, I am using meteorological spring for this time period, so I'm going from March 1st to the last day of May. Uh, uh, so some people like to use astronomical uh, sp uh, spring. I like to use meteorological spring a little bit more. It's a lot easier to use. Uh, and we're going to be giving you my precipitation and temperature anomaly forecast for uh, these months, as well as my overall forecast at the end of the video. So make sure you are staying tuned all the way until the end. So here's what my precipitation anomaly forecast looks like. I'm expecting below normal uh, precipitation and that could be in the form of rain or snow. Uh, it's going to be mainly rain because it's the spring months but you could definitely see a couple snow events uh, every uh, here uh, every once in a while over portions of the northern U.S. especially in March and April uh, and this is where I'm expecting less uh, precipitation much drier than normal conditions over these regions from the southwest into the central plains and then back through the Gulf states into the east coast there and that's where I'm expecting drier than normal conditions so Here's that below average region, your moderately below average region, and that's for parts of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and into Colorado there as well as another area for uh, portions of Florida, southernmost Mississippi and Alabama, and also for southern Louisiana and southeastern Texas there. Uh, when I looked at past analog years and also uh, years that were, and also the averages of La Nina years in the spring, uh, what I've seen is that we usually do see a fairly sizable below normal area for Florida and also a lot of the areas along the Gulf Coast, and then another area for some of those central plains regions, uh, and that's mainly what I'm basing my forecast off just because this is so far out it's, uh, three months out from the start of meteorological spring there aren't many good long-term models that are trusted uh, this far out so what I'm mainly basing my forecast off is kind of those longer term indices kind of like your La Nina your uh, El Nino your Enzo neutral so uh, that's what I'm mainly basing my forecast off of I think probably as we get into February we'll have a lot more accurate model data we'll be able to look at the pattern that we're currently in uh, and then kind of interpret what may happen in the spring so I think by late February we'll have a very good handle on uh, generally what may happen in the spring months right now this is mainly just giving you the uh, data and just kind of plotting it on a map and showing you what is most likely to happen this spring and again I will be updating this probably two or maybe even three more times uh, over the next couple of months Here's that uh, that above average precipitation region, and that's for portions of the northwest back through the northern plains, the Great Lakes, and then down through the Ohio and Tennessee valleys, and then up the spine of the Appalachians into portions of Pennsylvania, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. That's where I'm expecting uh, more precipitation, more uh, rain, and more snow uh, than what is typical over those regions, and this is where I think it's going to be a lot more active than normal, uh, and that's, again, mainly based off past analysis. Analogs, and when I looked at some of those analogs, the area that was most consistently showing fairly above normal precipitation is one of those regions for the Tennessee Valley, especially as you head a little bit west of the Tennessee Valley, and then another area for the Pacific Northwest where you guys were really getting uh, shown with quite a bit of precipitation based off all of the historical data that we have, uh, and that's definitely probably one of the things that really motivated me to put you guys in that moderately above average region. Here's that temperature forecast for March through May and for the spring months. And we have an above average region for portions of uh, the southern U.S. from New Mexico to about north and south Carolina there. And that's where I'm looking at slightly above normal temperatures. It will probably be a little bit warmer. And especially because that jet stream usually in long New Year's uh, is on the southern end of this. The southern jet stream usually isn't present. You really don't have a southern jet stream. Uh, and that's really what is going to motivate these te these temperatures to be above above normal and that's what's really gonna uh, bring those temperatures fairly above normal and that's what we typically see in a La Nina above course uh, as we get closer I think we'll have a lot more data and that'll really uh, get, get, give us a good outlook of what could happen in the spring months and then here's that below average region and you see that covers much of the northern US into the western United States of uh, most of the analog years as well as much of the historical data that we have shows below normal years in a La Nina 
for much of the northern U.S. and then into the western U.S., uh, especially in the spring months, that colder air does shift a little bit further to the east, so that's why portions of the northeast and the Great Lakes are included in that below normal, uh, wh whereas in the winter, a typical La Nina has that colder air uh, pushed a little bit further to the west, and then here's that moderately below average region, and this is where most uh, indices are looking at a moderately below average uh, winter uh, or uh, spring in terms of temperatures here. And that's from portions of California, Oregon, and Washington eastward into Wisconsin, Iowa, uh, Minnesota, and the UP of Michigan, and those areas. Uh, and that's where I'm expecting it to be even cooler uh, than that lighter blue area. And then here's my uh, overall forecast for the month of uh, the, the months of uh, March, uh, April, and May there. And we're going to go through and kind of break down what each individual color means uh, right here. So uh, in this darker green here, this is where I'm expecting much wetter conditions. And this is where generally uh, in most La Nina New Year's, you have a fairly active northern jet stream, which cuts across Oregon and Washington and then moves through the Rockies and then uh, heads into the eastern U.S. So usually these areas are getting quite a bit of rainfall, maybe even a little bit of snowfall as you get into early March potentially. Uh, and uh, here's how I really think the month by month uh, forecast is going to go in the spring. I think we're going to have a cooler uh, March and maybe early April for portions of the eastern U.S. And I think probably by May it really starts to warm up for much of the east and that colder shifts further to the west. So that's generally how I think uh, the winter or the uh, spring months will set up uh, this spring. Uh, I think the early part of spring is going to be fairly cold and active over portions of the east and uh, fairly warm for the west. But then I think it should switch around as we get to to, uh, probably late April into May. Now, this is where I'm expecting a cold and active pattern in that kind of um, medium shade of blue. Uh, there are for portions of Nevada, California, Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Utah, and Wyoming there. That's where I'm expecting it to be a lot more active, but also I do think you'll have some fairly cold conditions as well. Here's the mountain snow late area, and this is where uh, I think most of the mountain snow in the springtime will actually come in April and May. And if you actually look at some of the uh, statistical data, we do know that most of the Rockies actually see their most snowfall not in December, not in January, not in February, but actually in April and May in some of these areas. And that's because the pattern is usually a lot more active in those in those time periods and the mountains are so cold anyway they don't need it to be cold it, they just need more precipitation and that's what you usually see in the springtime so i think later on especially in april i think you guys will have quite a bit of snow in the mountains now dry and warm conditions i think generally will persist over the southwest uh, and that's pretty supported by most of the evidence that i've seen so far in the uh, in the south central united states so for, so for uh, parts of texas oklahoma and new mexico there that's what i'm expecting warm the normal conditions and generally I think it should be mild for much of the springtime although I think March might be a little bit cooler than normal severe weather is uh, definitely expected over these regions for uh, anywhere in this red region and that's mainly where I'm thinking you're gonna get an intersection between some of that Gulf moisture which is gonna probably go out of the Gulf of Mexico and head northward uh, and then also some of that colder air that might be present further to the north that might help uh, a little bit with some of your severe weather when you get cold air and warm air to converge over an area, that's what usually uh, leads to severe weather, and that's generally what I'm expecting for the spring months. Much drier conditions over portions of the Gulf states from Texas to about Florida and Georgia there. Very active conditions also for portions of uh, the western Tennessee Valley there. Uh, and that's where I think you're going to have a lot of systems that are going to track either uh, right along this area or maybe even a little bit north of this area into uh, especially April and May. And that's where you might actually get into a fairly active pattern where every few days you do see uh, maybe another half inch of rain, maybe another quarter of inch, inch of rain. So I think generally it'll be fairly persistent and fairly active uh, through the spring months. Average conditions are expected for the central part of the United States. You're going to be in between that cold air, the warm air, the dry conditions, and the wetter conditions over uh, the central U.S. So that's why I'm putting you guys in that average region. And I'm expecting much cooler 
conditions for portions of the northern plains uh, and that's mainly just uh, because most La Nina years have that cold air centered over the northern plains uh, but of course as we get closer and as we get more model data uh, we'll definitely have a more accurate representation of what this specific uh, spring will look like and we will we will have more than just the analogs and past years to really base our forecast off lots of lake effect snow is expected here mainly because the lakes are still even though we've had a fairly uh, decently cold uh, December most of the lakes are still uh, they still have fairly warm lake temperatures and if it's only going to warm up from uh, about February onward it's only going to get warmer uh, and as we get into March it's really going to start to heat up you will probably have quite a bit of lake effect whether that be rain or snow because you can get lake effect in the form of rain uh, that's still to be determined now I'm expecting snow late also for these regions for portions of the Adirondacks and then into the green and white mountains and then through northern Maine that's mainly where I'm expecting the snow to maybe linger even into later April, uh, potentially, especially in some of those mountain areas. Uh, so definitely you guys could be seeing some snow later, although I think most of your snow will come mainly in March and potentially early April. I'm not expecting too many May systems to be bringing any snowfall for these regions, although that is certainly possible. Snowy and potentially colder earlier over portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast. This is where, again, I think it's going to be snowy and uh, potentially for especially in uh, early March I think this might be one of those back uh, back end loaded winters where you're dealing with a lot more snow uh, kind of a gap of snow in the middle of, of, of the winter but then as you get into February and March you see a lot more snow or, or cold over the east and I think that might be what we're seeing with this winter where the first part of the winter uh, might have been a lot colder and then it might warm up and then I think it'll cool back down into March where I think you'll get some snow cold but then I think probably by April and May it'll really start to turn where it'll get a little bit warmer and then warm lay over the southeast states over Georgia the Carolinas and into Virginia and some surrounding areas this is where I'm expecting that warm air to really kick in as we get into late April and May and really, as we get into late May, this is when I think it's really going to start to warm up, not only with your temperatures, but also your averages uh, and your uh, temperature anomalies will probably start to rise to maybe three or four, maybe even five degrees above normal as we get into May, because I do think May is going to be a fairly uh, warm month. And that's what's usually supported with these types of patterns that we're in currently. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.